Good afternoon and welcome to the very first Conversations on Social Issues of Spring Quarter. Thank you for being here. My name is Kimberly Tate and I'm one of the reference and instruction librarians here at the library. So show of hands, who has been to COSI before? Oh, so we have lots and lots of new people. So for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, we hold this series in the library because we see it as an extension of our charge to promote the freedom of information and open exchange of ideas. So whether or not you agree with every single thing that you hear in this conversation today, or hear from some of your other audience members as we engage in this conversation, I'll ask that you all remain respectful of each other and really just engage with the ideas and challenge yourselves. So, at the end of this session, you can take a look at some of the text that we have at the front of the board in case you'd like to learn more about this topic or find further resources. Um, if that's the case, you can come talk to me. You can talk to Colette to talk to him about some of the resources he's found in his research. And at the end of this, I'll ask you to fill out a brief survey, tell us what you liked, how we can improve, so that these can remain relevant for you all. And if you are interested in leading a conversation, then come talk to me. We'd love to have students um, on the schedule. And if you're going to be here in the fall, we have plenty of room. We haven't even started planning yet, so you can, be, you can have your pick of dates. All right. So today, please join me in welcoming Khaled al Hamwi as we discuss dumbing us down. Does it ever catch you? Um, I think I think I Actually, just forgive me if I can't pronounce some words probably. I mean, English is not my mother language. So. Sorry about this. Do you forget about it? Yeah. Yeah, just on its own. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, my message is very clear. Very clear, I mean. And I'm talking from a student perspective. I'm not a PhD or... Uh, I'm not a PhD or some professional in education, you know, or social issues, I mean. I'm just talking from a student perspective, from my experience, and of course somebody, some of you might agree with me, as well, some of us might not, you know, so just, I mean, it's just uh, my personal experience, and uh, there are a lot of sources, and, uh, like uh, professors, and professors did a lot of research, and they, they spent their, their life, like 30 years or 20 years, Finally, finally, they end up like we don't have a good education system that would satisfy everybody. I mean, we know that the, the uh, definition of education, like if you give me a definition of uh, education in Google, probably. So you get, like, in summary, education is understanding, knowledge, and skills. Right? Some other for subjects like. But uh, in, my, in my opinion, I mean, education is, if we really, education is the practical skills that a uh, student gains after undergoing through practical training and specific graduate subjects and research in life. And I think many, many of you got my message right now for just uh, a small specific graduate. We know. The reason, the reason for establishing any civilization, of course, is education. You, know? you can't establish a civilization with laws and orders without uh, having a like, like, big amount of education and, uh, on personal side and community side, you know? personal view and community view. Uh, For oh, sure, everybody will pass. Uh, we are in here in college for a purpose, I mean, we're not here to have fun or just waste time, you know? Like everybody of us has been, has, uh, has something to change probably in his life, his family and life probably. Like some people are, some students are first generation students. And they will say, hey, I mean, the last thing of my family probably will be. Or be or some clinic or some doctors, uh, or let's say uh, software company or something else. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, of course, it's funny for everybody. Uh, we know, we know education as, education as compulsory in many countries. 
But you have to go to school from uh, age five or six until like uh, grade 12 to, to high school. It's compulsory to go there, otherwise, in some countries you might go to jail probably. <laughs> I mean, we don't talk about this uh, explanation of this topic. Uh, we don't explain. We don't want to explain this in uh, some countries. Like in some countries, the reason you go to jail if you don't go to a high school or elementary school, not because they, they want you to to learn or to have uh, knowledge, I mean. but uh, we need you to go there just to mold your mind to follow their orders. Just like simply uh, dictatorship laws, I mean, dictatorship. For sure, the education is important. But I'm not saying, like, hey, we don't have to go to school to compulsory school. Compulsory school is not fair. No. We appreciate that compulsory, compulsory is, uh, education is compulsory in many countries. But the problem is, are those, are, are those countries following the like uh, the best education system that would satisfy everybody and would like uh, like show the, uh, the talent of every person in this country or every individual. Do you think so? For sure. When we start going to school, I mean from elementary school. We go, we start from alphabets, we start reading, we start doing uh, mathematics, and then we go much more further in physics and uh, much more, uh, like much more complex matters. But I mean, the problem is, You start like thinking about what, what what do you want to be like uh, in the future probably. Children start thinking about becoming a hero or an astronaut, or a movie star, or a fighter, or, or, or pilot, or, or what else probably. But once the children go to school, I mean, and once they like start uh, facing like very very vast amount of information on uh, st standardized uh, exams and tests, you know. I mean, their interests become like change. They might change their major, you know, they might change even their interest in school. Some, some students, when they just step up, step in uh, seventh grade, probably they might say, well, school is not my interest yet. Though. It's not becoming the, the, the main goal of my life. For sure. For sure. For sure, in this case, schools are much more prisoners for uh, students when they have to follow the, those laws and uh, rules. I mean, they have to learn uh, like specific subjects. If they can't, they can't go out of this. Like if you, if you are doing a homework probably for your instructor or uh, what else, your professor in college probably. Let's say you have. Uh, you have subject about a specific topic probably or something. Can you come up with something creative or out of his outline or out of his, uh, what he have uh, assigned for you? Of course, no, I mean, you are limited to something specific. He wants you to do it. And if you don't do this, you'll get punishment. It might be like lower grades probably. In some countries, it might be like physical punishments, you know. We know, we know creative, the definition of creativity is always coming up with something that's not existed, something that uh, wasn't somebody familiar with before you, I mean. And we know the main reason of education, uh, the main reason of education should be create, creative generation will be able to solve like uh, political problems, uh, environmental problems probably, 
we have a lot of issues and problems today, and all of them. We have uh, world, uh, global warming, I mean, we have uh, pollution, I mean. But of course, if, I, if you ask any student, like, uh, what you are, can you tell me anything about those topic, topics? They will say, I mean, our school didn't mention anything like this. Like, uh, we, we, so we used to study like much subjects and titles are not related to those uh, topics, I mean, or those problems uh, in the world today. You know, uh, you know, the only, the only, the only thing, or the only thing you might get uh, out of spending like very, very long time in uh, education or learning, I mean, is your ability to think critically about any topic or any. Uh, Anything, any questions some people ask you or any discussion or argument. But with the current educational system, I mean, which emphasize more in memorizing, taking the uh, assignments, doing the assignments, and taking the exam at the end. With a very limited time, you have, uh, you don't have the ability to think critically. Like when, you're, when your uh, professor assigns you like any topic or any uh, assignments to do, I mean, uh, you have a specific outline, you have specific uh, rules, you have specific, I mean, uh, page or uh, procedure to follow, procedure to follow, I mean, and otherwise, you can't, you can't think really critically about this in, uh, in terms of like your personal view probably, or you can't go, you can't go outside the topic, I mean, coming, coming up with something else. One time you might experience like uh, your professor wants want, like some specific structure like to follow like introduction, body or like this. But you know, in my opinion, there's no there's no limitation in writing. I mean, for example, like uh, we know there's no wrong answer or uh, correct answer of writing. You might have your own your own structure or you might not. You might come up with uh, something else that uh, the, the teacher is not familiar with. But uh, at the end, I mean, you are wrong for this. You didn't follow the procedure, you didn't follow the outline. So I can't give you anything for this. Uh, talking about uh, the grading system, <laughs> You know, with every, like every couple of weeks probably, or every uh, quarter probably, at the end, we take exams, we do uh, quizzes probably, and there's grading for those. Eventually, I mean, teachers just push us to think about uh, how can we get higher, higher grades? How can we, so I mean, the, my point is, we always think about the statistics of our class. Like, how, how, I, how what's my score right now? Well, how, am I like more than 70% or less? Should I do more like this? So you end up thinking more about the statistics of your class, more than thinking about the knowledge of your class. What did you get out of this? What the topic you discussed, you know? Uh, and you spend too much uh, stress and energy on thinking about those uh, numbers, uh, those numbers, and how many percent for this paper and how many percent for this uh, this paper. I mean, rather real, real than uh, exploration in, in your class or uh, the, the, the specific topic. I mean, or coming up with new ideas. We know, we know today, uh, if, 
you ask uh, anybody like, uh, why, why did you choose the, this major problem? He will say, uh, he, he will tend it for financial reasons. Like, uh, it's better paid probably. Or, like, why did you choose, if you ask somebody, why did you choose, choose software engineering? He will say, well, I like us and Lama, but uh, software engineering offers to me more more pay or more, of course everybody has his own freedom, you know. But uh, what I'm saying, my people are, uh, I mean students today, they are forced to choose something else that they don't have interest in, in or they don't have uh, talents in it, like improved talents, I mean. And uh, I, I'm sure you, you met a lot of uh, students or friends in your life like this, like choose something they are not interested in. Or some students right now work like uh, in jobs, they are not related in to their majors. Uh, I, I saw a study one time, I don't have exact, exact statistics about it. Like, uh, probably more than 50% of people work their jobs, they are not related to their jobs. So, it's one reason why like, uh, this is one of the outcomes of the own education system that we might follow. Right? They don't, have, uh, they don't have the ability to show their talents or to. I mean, it's four things that yeah, they are good in. Many students, many students' experiences are not appealing today for employers. If you go to a company, I mean, and experience this, you might apply, like, even if it's related to, major, to your major, I mean, they might, uh, they might ask you what, kind, what experience you, uh, you have. And for sure, when, uh, when you spend your life studying mathematics, probably, and physics, and then you go to some engineering uh, company, probably, they might ask you, like, what experience do you have? Well, I have uh, mathematics and engineer. Uh, I have mathematics and uh, physics, and they might say that's not what we want. I mean, we have probably computer programming. What, what, what's your background about this? So, and for sure, you spend the entire, the, 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 like the, the major time of your life studying subjects or things. They are not uh, related yet to the major or the the practical field that you want to work in. Probably after school or within school, I mean, within school time. Uh, and so, a lot of students tend today like to work, and while, while they are studying, probably, they can't work in some places they are related to, to their jobs, I mean. Uh, and there's the excuse they don't have experience. And of course, this is because the education system doesn't allow for students, or the, the education system sources. And training doesn't have like uh, the enough uh, enough ways that might make like uh, good or productive uh, students that might fit in the, in the industry. I mean, uh, I think everybody got my message. Is it, isn't it clear? Like, and for sure, I think uh, everybody. Uh, like there is a huge study right now will be published. Like current education system is like with, uh, with a lot of students dropping out of college and high school for many reasons. I mean, but the main reasons of this, they are not able to uh, to cope with the education system. Like uh, one one student tell, tell, uh, told me, I could uh, I dropped because I didn't get. Uh, I didn't get the score in SAT, I mean, even though he was very good in mathematics, and, uh, but probably has some, some circumstances or something else like might avoid him to have good uh, grade at that time. 
So he lost his chance, probably, and he said, well, I can't, I can't go forward more. He has knowledge in his subject, and he has, uh, you know, but uh, he said, it's just like standardized tests and exams, and those like, uh, uh, those exams, I mean, just uh, prevent him to go on in his educational uh, uh, Some students, a lot of students, and we all experience this, of course, anxiety, stress, and some, uh, some students uh, end up depressed, I mean, because of uh, lower grades, probably, or an inability to, an ability probably to, like, to get the, the grades that they need for their major, for, for specific major. And of course, when you when you get some, when you don't get something that like you are thinking about in your life for a very long time, it's like a huge change in your life. Probably, I mean, I'm glad I'm not in it yet, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'm not here. I mean, and hopefully for you, of course. I hope everybody will get what, whatever you want. <coughs> of course, uh, for every problem, problem there's solution. Solutions. I mean, we need the education and revolution. We, need, we are not against schools, but we are, we are against the educational system. Everybody should follow things he is interested in. How can we get this? We should have uh, tennis institutions. We should have research centers. We, have, we should have human resources that might uh, improve and develop uh, everybody talent and everybody interest. Because. Uh, it's impossible to have in one class, like let's say you go to any class probably, like even in second year of college or university, you might somebody interested in arts with somebody interested in engineering, and engineering, I mean, and they are taking taking the same class with this late uh, age probably, or I think 22 probably or 23 or even 21. You are not yet, you are, you are not taking the subject you need for your major probably. I think it's too late for you. Because uh, the more you are young, and the, the more you get the materials you need for your major, the more you'll be mastered in the future. Mm. For, for example, for example, I mean, you might go to, let's say, well, if you go to mechanical engineering public school, you, say, you study like mathematics until, until the third year, but you don't have you don't have the reason why you are studying math mathematics because you don't have the tools to show you like why you are studying math mathematics. How can we apply this on on real life? How can we use mathematics for uh, uh, in terms of mechanical engineering? How can we use mathematics for uh, integrating an engine, probably car engine, or designing something uh, we need in the industrial? Like why do we why do we why we don't have tools sources uh, in our schools? Schools probably could help us to, to be like to study directly what we need in, in the future. Uh, also, avoiding I think avoiding standardized exams would give the opportunity for a lot of students to be in what they want, what they want to be in. And uh, this, in my opinion, would, would take uh, would take the society to be very like uh, very far uh, like. Uh, Safe point, I mean, because if, if, if everybody satisfied uh, what he wants, of course we get better the country and better society. Yeah, I would like to mention, like, uh, I want to mention Germany. You know, in Germany they focus more on technical schools more than universities. And we you know there are studies like the most satisfied people in the world. I mean, for their work and their life, are German German people. Why? Because uh, they, mostly they study and they work what they, what they want. And technical schools offer for them like you can go to probably to mechanical engineering and you can go to medicine with the same probably the same grades. So there are no limitations will prevent uh, students what they want to be in the future. And they have a huge huge amount of tools, sources and explorations, that's also sorry, in uh, their technical schools. Like you finish high school, you go immediately to Taking it to school, school probably, and you start practicing the, 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 the material or the subject in, in real life. I mean. All right. Uh, we, we are not done yet. I mean, we have we, we just have like short short video, 
I want to show for you guys, hopefully not feel well right, feel well right now. Actually, my research was like 10 pages, but I don't know, like, <laughs> I forgot a lot of things. I mean, even though I prepared a lot yesterday, but I don't know, sometimes when the morning comes, you feel like you forget everything. This is because of the education system also. <laughs>
And what penalizing her for getting distracted? From what? No. Boring stuff. <laughs> At school, for the most part. It seems to me not a coincidence totally that the instance of ADHD has risen in parallel with the growth of standardized testing. Now, these kids are being given Ritalin and Adderall and all manner of things, often quite dangerous drugs, to get them focused and calm them down. But according to this, attention deficit order increases as you travel east across the country. People start losing interest in Oklahoma. <laughs> think straight in Arkansas, and by the time they get to Washington, they're lost their Kimberley. And there are separate reasons for that, I believe. It's a fictitious epidemic. If you think of it, the arts, and I don't say this exclusively the arts, I think it's also true of science and of maths, but let me, I say that they are particularly because they are the victims of this mentality currently, particularly. The arts especially address the idea of aesthetic experience. An aesthetic experience is one in which your senses are operating at their peak, when you're present in the current moment, when you're resonating with the excitement of this thing that you're experiencing, when you're fully alive. An anesthetic is when you shut your senses off and deaden yourself to what's happening. And a lot of these drugs are that. We're getting our children to education by anesthetizing them. And I think we should be doing the exact opposite. We shouldn't be putting them asleep. We should be waking them up to what they have inside of themselves. But the model we have is this. It's, I believe we have a system of education that is modeled on the interests of industrialism and in the image of it. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, schools are still pretty much organized on factory lines, so ringing bells, separate facilities, uh, specialized into separate subjects. Um, we still educate children by batches. You know, we put them through the system by age group. Why do we do that? You know, why is there this assumption that the most important thing kids have in common is how old they are? You know, it's not the most important thing about them is their date of manufacture. I mean, well, I know kids who are much better than other kids of the same age in different disciplines, you know, or at different times of the day, or better in smaller groups than in large groups, or sometimes they want to be on their own. If you're interested in the model of learning, you don't start from this production line mentality. These are, it's essentially about conformity, and increasing it's about that as you look at the growth of standardized testing and standardized curricula. And it's about standardization. I believe we've got to go in the exact opposite direction. That's what I mean about changing the paradigm. There's a great study done recently on divergent thinking. Published a couple of years ago. So divergent thinking isn't the same thing as creativity. I define creativity as the, the process of having original ideas that have value. Divergent thinking isn't a synonym, but it's a, an essential capacity for creativity. It's the ability to see lots of possible answers to a question, lots of possible ways of interpreting a question, uh, to think what Edmund de Bovo would probably call laterally, uh, to think not just in linear or convergent ways, uh, to see multiple answers, not one. So, I mean, there are tests for this. I mean, one kind of common example would be people might be asked to say, how many uses can you think of for a paper clip? Well, those routine questions. Most people might come with 10 or 50. People who are good at this might come with 200. And they do that by saying, well, could the paper clip be 200 foot tall and be made out of foam rubber? You know, like, does it have to be a paper clip as we know it, Jim? You know? um, now, the test for this, and they gave them to 1,500 people in a book called Great Point and Beyond. And on the protocol of the test, if you scored above a certain level, you'd be considered to be a genius in divergent thinking. Okay? So my question to you is, what percentage of the people tested of the 1,500 scored at genius level for divergent thinking? Now you need to know one more thing about them. These were kindergarten children. So what do you think? What percentage of genius level? 80. 80. 80. 80. 90%. Now, the thing about this was it was a longitudinal study. So they retested the same children five years later. Eight, eight to ten, what do you think? Fifteen. They retested them again five years later, ages uh, 30 to 15. You can see a trend there, can you? Now, this tells an interesting story. Because you couldn't imagine it going the other way. 
okay? You start off not being very good, but you get better as you get older. But this shows two things. One is we all have this capacity. And two, it mostly deteriorates. Now, a lot of things that happen to these kids as they've grown up, a lot. But one of the most important things happens, and I'm convinced, is that by now, they've become educated. You know, they've spent 10 years at school being told there's one answer, it's at the bank. And don't look. And don't copy, because that's cheating. In outside schools, that's called collaboration. No, but inside schools. Now, this isn't because teachers want it this way, it's just because it happens that way. Um, it's because it's in the gene pool of education. We have to think differently about human capacity. We have to get over this old conception of academic, non-academic, abstract, theoretical, vocational, uh, and see it for what it is, um, a myth. Uh, secondly, we have to recognize that most great learning happens in groups. The collaboration is the stuff of growth. If we atomize people and separate them and judge them separately, we form a kind of disjunction between them and their natural learning environment. And thirdly, it's crucially about the culture of our institutions, the habits of the institution, and the habitats that they occupy. Thank you very much for watching. The class is a little bit uh, long, probably. Uh, it has a lot of difficult terms and definitions, but I'm sorry about this. But I think okay, you got the main idea. Like how, uh, how the education system, I mean, makes an impact in, uh, like even the economic, uh, the economic situation of the country or uh, the people of the country themselves, you know. Uh, of course, don't drop, drop out of school, uh, guys. But, <laughs> I mean, always seek something practi practical in real life, I mean. And you have, you have the ability to explore right now. You can go somewhere else, like uh, companies or something, like try to get in and sh just feel the difference between this what you learn in this and short amount in those companies and what you might like, learn, what you can, could learn in school for years, you know. For me, for my experience, I mean, I work right now in dental lab. So, you know, we do like crowns, implants, and this stuff. I have been in there for six months. What I learned and explored in those six, six months, I, I mean, I might need in school like six years probably, or even more, because and then there's something I need. You know, nothing else. And then learning something specific. I'm not talking to you right now about literature. And uh, after a while, I'm solving uh, calculus uh, or some uh, work problem I haven't heard about it before. You know, in calculus. Like, what do you think of the, uh, somebody who fall down from a mountain? If his weight was like 30 kilograms, so what do you think he would be on? Uh, on some uh, specific height problem. Well, I mean, things we don't need, you know? It's very interesting. And we need it in our life, but we need them practical. Uh, and we need them practical uh, things and practical uh, ways, you know? Not just uh, for information in your mind, and that's it. I mean, it's very, it's very, very uh, long conversation, you know, and uh, we didn't mention any uh, financial or yeah, something related to student fi fi financial situation or status or like this. But I mean, education is, uh, for me, education should be everywhere. Like, uh, you might pay tuition for a school, like, uh, how much do you get for a class for it? <coughs> Yeah, I mean, the, 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 let's say whatever, I mean, you might go to a bookstore, for 200 probably you can buy like 10 books, probably 10 years books, and you can bring, uh, get knowledge like, out of those 10 or 20 books probably, let's say, you might get knowledge for like one year in uh, school, university, and you are paying like very, very less amount. I mean, the problem is today, 
You go to school, you pay for your degree, you are getting your degree, you are getting the paper, your, your, your name is written. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, you, are, you are getting educated uh, at this time, you know. Education is everywhere, I mean, and you can't get every education out of nothing. Even, you know, I see some homeless, even some homeless people, you know, they have, uh, they have books, and they might be educated, or they, or they can discuss uh, topics or issues with you, some, but like some uh, student in second year university, he, might, he, he doesn't have any idea about it, you know. So, yeah, this is another topic, I mean, in some Do you think it's possible to change the, the systemic problems in the U.S. education system at this point? Yeah, I mean, I mean, of course, uh, if the USA wants to change, I mean, of course, it has uh, USA has sources, USA has uh, like better or more organized uh, system that would be changed uh, like, and very fast, very quickly, you know, not a lot of countries, like uh, you always have statistics and studies, so you can apply uh, changes like in very, uh, like in very small, small amount of time, you know, and the USA can do this, of course, I mean, versa. they. Uh, they can provide schools with the sources, with materials, with the new education system, you know, avoid standardized, standardized uh, exams that frustrate students, open more uh, technical institutions, you know. So it has... Yeah, I, I think so. I, I mean, a lot of those professors have been like... Uh, uh, sorry about this. They are very experienced, like, they, they, they came up with those studies for 20 years or 30 years research, you know. I have this book for... Uh, John Gatto, he was uh, he was teaching for 30 years, and uh, he up at the end he said the the whole educational system that we are uh, we are following right now right now is wrong, and according to his experience, you can I recommend this this book for you guys. You can read it. It's very informative, really. Yeah. It's very logical. I mean. So it's uh, dumping us down. That's how we get the title, and the and one chapter is very interesting. Chapter 4, he said, we need less school, not more. We were way making the future, he said, and hardly any of us troubled to think uh, what future we were making. And here it is. And he starts talking about the, the education system that he experienced over there. You buy like a toy, you know, and it's a piece of solution. So I tried to explain for him on the board, you know, he didn't get it. But when when you give it, uh, when you give it to him, he can explore. He can find this uh, this part will fit to this part and this, you know. So nothing nothing comes from memorization or just reading or realizing that something, you know. Everything comes from exploration. From uh, if you don't see it and touch, and uh, you never explore, you know. Do you have 
have any ideas for the how to generate a code efficient system? Uh, so basically, I just wanted to say, so we know, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have many, um, you know, well-known, uh, very smart, intelligent people who dropped out of school, yeah. who ended up being something yes. uh, we look up to nowadays. Yeah. But do you call this something as following their own heart, talent, or a knowledge? Yeah. That thanks, thanks for asking this question. I mean, if you see, like, uh, if you look up for the history of uh, entrepreneurs today, and uh, like the major or the mainstream companies in the world, they have problems with schools. They were the Buddhists. I mean, they said, well, this is not my interest. Thank you very much, school, and I'm going to find something else. And I succeed. You know, I have a lot of exa examples of those. I know uh, the owner of Ferrari. Who doesn't know Ferrari? I mean, <laughs> a super, super fancy sport car. I mean, it's like uh, Ferrari is not, is not only. Uh, Achievement for this person or for his country or his city, I mean, it's an achievement for humanity. And of course, the owner of Ferrari wasn't, uh, he, uh, he dropped out of school and he started his own. And many, many, many examples of those, you know. We know, uh, oh yeah, we know Einstein. He said, what I get from my, by myself, by my exploration, is so, so far, uh, so bigger than what I get from school, you know. Uh, we know also, uh, uh, the founder of uh, Apple, uh, Steve Jobs. Also, he, uh, I think he dropped out of college or something, I know. I don't know, but he said, uh, I mean, according to his experience, I mean, school wasn't, wasn't the only way for him to make uh, what he did, but, uh, what he did. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, there's an interesting, uh, you always uh, in school. I mean, whether your friends or the uh, the, uh, the the offices in here help you like to find your major or your job. You know, they might ask you, what kind of job do you want to have in the future? What kind of company of company do you, do you want to work with? They don't ask you what kind of business do you want to open. What kind of uh, ways of practice do you have? Do you want to have? You know. So it's always about being employee, thinking employee, employee mentality, not employer or finding other ways and practice. Should be always a good like the, the GOB mentality, you know, and go to office or work for somebody else. Any questions? Thank you.